Hey everyone, I'm Crazyman32 from Roblox. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make a plugin. Um, so if you've never seen the Roblox wiki page for this before, uh, I would recommend doing that first. So uh, the wiki page has a good um, documentation of the plugin object itself. And uh, they also have a tutorial page on how to make plugins. Um, for this tutorial, I'm actually going to be kind of going in depth with this tutorial, just kind of giving a visual aid to this tutorial um, to see what it takes to create a plugin from scratch. So uh, for this example or for this tutorial, we're going to make a plugin that essentially makes a flat terrain um, thing, just because why not? <laughs> Uh, it's a simple plugin to make, and I also want one, so win-win situation. So to start off with, um, if we look at the tutorial, we need to create a model. So you can see that all plugins um, start with like a, a model object. So this model represents the whole plugin and all of its data. Uh, a plugin can also be a script standalone, um, but having it a model lets you do a lot more with it. So. Let's start off with the model. We'll call this flat terrain because we're going to be creating flat terrain. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so this is our, our, essentially our plugin. Um, now, what we do with this uh, after this point is that we can um, we can create scripts. Um, we can throw in uh, interface objects. We can throw in actual models and parts and whatnot. We can put anything in this we want. Um, Essentially what happens though is that any script that's put in here that's not disabled, um, when it's installed as a plugin, Studio will go through this model and execute all of those scripts. And those scripts can have access to the things in this model too. So uh, let's start off by creating a script then um, as our plugin. Oops. And this script may call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. Um, just make sure it's not disabled. Flat drain. Alright, so uh, the special feature that plugins get is this keyword called plugin. Now, this keyword plugin um, is essentially a reference to a plugin object um, that's been injected into the script behind the scenes. So we don't have to define it, we don't have to say plugin equals anything, um, it essentially exists when the script exists. Of course, because of this nature, if we try to do anything with it, we're going to get a little blue underline here. Um, that's just because the script analysis thing gets confused and, slight, and doesn't recognize it as a variable that exists. So just ignore the blue line, um, it, it's there, <laughs> don't worry about it. So to start off, let's just make it print something. So hello from flat terrain plugin. So if this works, then once we upload and install the plugin um, and then restart Studio, what should happen is that once we enter a place in Studio, um, we should see it print hello from flat terrain plugin. <clears throat> so once you have your code written and you want to test your plugin, uh, the very first step is to upload it as a plugin. So you have to right click your model, your script, or whatever you're using as your plugin, and then click publish as plugin. And then you can see I kind of created one already called Flat Train Creator. So I'm going to upload it to that, but usually you would say create new, and then you'd get a name and description, and you click finish, and it'll upload. For this, I'm just going to rewrite or overwrite my. Uh, existing one. Okay, so uploaded, good. So sadly, when you upload plugins like this, they don't automatically install on a studio for you. So now what we have to do is go to tools and manage plugins. So again, like I said, that plugin is not going to show up in your existing installed plugins here. Um, this is just the first time that once, uh, so we, we have to install our new plugin and then after that we can update it from here. So for now we have to actually go find our plugin. So I'm just going to click find plugins which is going to take me essentially to my creations thing here. 
um, and I'm gonna it it takes me to the library tab here under plugins. Um, so I'm just gonna go right to my creations, and then go to plugins, and wait for it to load forever. And it should bring up a list of my plugins. Here we go. Um, and I'm gonna click on my flat terrain creator. And then I'm going to click install. Cool. So now I've installed the new plugin I created. Um, so the next step is to restart Studio. <laughs> so when you install or update a plugin, you have to restart Studio in order for those effects to take place. So I'm just going to exit out of Studio, save it, and then start it back up. And then once it comes up soon, no, no. Try that again. There we go. Okay. So once Studio is back up, just go to the place again where you're developing your plugin. So mine is plugin test. Um, and then, hey, look at that. So we got it to print hello from flat terrain plugin in the output here. So we know that the plugin installed. So that's awesome. Um, as you can see though, there's no button that showed up for it. If we want to create a button for this, which we will, um, we're gonna have to create the button ourselves through the plugin script. Um, but this, is a, this is a nice start though, because you can see that uh, a plugin doesn't have to have a button. So you could create other utility plugins that just work in the background that you, you don't actually interact with. So it, it kind of gives you more flexibility as to what you can do with plugins. Um, and, you know, you just let your imagination run wild. <laughs> I've created a few things that are running in the background here even um, that you don't necessarily see. So let's create a button uh, to activate our plugin. So uh, we're going to make our plugin simply a toggle. So or not a toggle. It, it's just a, a trigger to create the flat terrain. So you see how some plugins, um, when they're selected, they stay highlighted. Um, that's not going to be how this one works. Um, so for an example, my create script thing, you click it and it disables itself. It doesn't stay enabled. Um, so same nature, you click it and it creates flat terrain. That's what we want. So if we go back to our tutorial, um, we can see how to make a button. So we see, okay, button equals toolbar create button and we have three uh, parameters here so it, this isn't very clear to me as to what needs to happen so I'm going to go to the, the plugin object and look at this directly um, to figure out what I need to do so on this plugin uh, wiki page you have to actually click show hidden members to see all the fancy things that you can do so these are hidden because they have plugin security, which means it has a higher level of security that you need in order to access those things. And plugin security, as it may seem, plugins have access to. So we saw from this that it says toolbar create button. So we need a toolbar to exist too. Um, so in our plugin, we can see that there's a create toolbar method here. So um, the first step is to create a toolbar, and we can see that the name, you have to give it a name too. Um, so for example, toolbar are these little sections of plugins here. You'll see they're separated a little bit. You can kind of drag them, and the, a toolbar can have multiple buttons, like right here. 
Um, that's a, a single toolbar. Anytime you create a toolbar, it either creates a new one or it gets the existing one. So don't worry about creating ones with the same name, they will join together. So for this, uh, we're gonna get rid of this code and then we're gonna say local toolbar equals plugin create toolbar. And then we need to give it a name. I'm just gonna call it terrain. Now I'm pretty sure terrain is also uh, the toolbar right here. So we'll probably see it come up with all of these. Cool. Now we need to create our button. So we saw that toolbar create button was our method. Now we need to give it a few arguments. Um, so if we click uh, here, okay, so in our create toolbar, it returns a new toolbar. So if we go to our tutorial, you can see that we're using the toolbar to create the button. So we should look at the toolbar's documentation to see what we need in these arguments. So we can see that it says the return new toolbar and it gives me a link to toolbar. So I'm gonna just go to that. And well, actually I'm gonna create a new link to it. Oh no, it's the wrong button. Show hidden members, toolbar. Cool, so this is our documentation for toolbar. Again, we have to click show hidden members and voila, we see create button. So we have a string text, string tooltip, and string icon name. So text, tooltip, and icon. Text, tooltip, and icon. So text, um, you can leave blank. Usually you would leave this blank. Um, so for example, these buttons don't have text with them. They're just buttons. Uh, the tooltip though is the text you see when you hover over it. So a little tooltip, that's what those are called. Um, and then the icon is the asset URL to the icon. Um, for this example, I'm not gonna give you an icon, but if you did, I recommend uploading a 16 by 16 uh, pixel image for these because that's the size of these buttons. Um, and then the quality will look good. Uh, so that's what I would recommend for that. That's how I've done this before. You just upload uh, a decal to Roblox, uh, 16 by 16 image, and then you get the, the, an easy way to find the image if you want. Um, you could either my favorite way is to, here I'll show you an example. So go to, to your decal, whatever one it is. Go to inventory, decals. And okay, this is good because these are what I use for plugins. So I have this little gear thing. I click on it and I get this. So an easy way to do it is to steal this ID number up here copy that and then what you can do is create the asset link from this it's just rbx rbx asset id colon two forward slashes and then the id this is the easy way to do it um, so if you notice if i get my base plate and I insert a decal. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong with this. So when you do a decal, you actually have to subtract one from this. So I can see that my last number is 80. I need to subtract one from 80, that would be 79. So if I put the texture as that, I should, yep, I get my icon. So that's a kind of complicated way to do it. Another way to do it would be go to your toolbox go to your decals, put it in your game, and then steal the texture link there. And then you could use that too. Again, for this example, I'm not going to be using that. I'm gonna be using blank.